This is how you actually create relationships, guys. This is how you stand out by having a different script than every other real estate agent out there. This is how you actually build a big business and show prospects that you actually care about what's going on in their life. This is how you approach people low pressure. This is how you show them that you don't care about a deal, that you're not there to do a deal because you didn't even ask them if they wanted to do a deal. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Zero to Diamond podcast. I'm your host, Ricky Carruth. I'm on a mission to help reduce the failure rate in the real estate industry by helping you master your skills on the phone, conquer your fears, and changing your mindset. Now, let's get into the show. Guys, what's happening? Welcome to the webinar today. I'm going to give it a second for everybody to log in and... Uh, you know, get get online here and, and get tuned in so we can get started. Hope everybody's doing super well. Um, give it a few minutes and I'll kind of get into kind of uh, I'll briefly explain kind of what we're going to do today. And then from there, we'll just jump right into it. What's up? What's up, guys? What's happening? Somebody comment yes or me if you guys can hear me okay on Facebook, Instagram. Can you guys hear me all right? Giving it a few minutes for everybody to, to log in. Uh, comment with a yes or a me if you guys can hear me. Cool, cool, cool. Awesome, awesome. Okay, here we go. Here's all the comments popped in all at once. Cool. So I'm going to give it a few more minutes here. Let everybody log in. Hope everybody's doing super well today. It's a beautiful day down here for me. It's about 70 degrees on the beach. I'm in Orange Beach, Alabama. Um, super happy to have you guys with us. Um, while I'm waiting on everybody to show up, let me kind of get into um, kind of briefly explain what I'm going to do here today. Uh, this is going to be a Q&A, like, like I'm going to do some Q&A, right? Um, so feel free to ask questions. I'm going to, I'm going to briefly kind of give you a background of my story and then I'm going to get into all the intricate details of my business, my phone script, what I say, my mindset, um, how I follow up, what not to say, voicemails, the whole nine yards, everything you need to know to effectively circle prospect. But I do want you to know that the circle prospecting is it's zero to diamond is not just about circle prospecting. It's, it's a mindset. It's like a way of life. It's a lifestyle. It is a mindset. Um, it can be used for any avenue of not only real estate, but business in general. Um, you got real estate, uh, 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 relationships over transactions is the biggest like key. Um, always value relationships over transactions, right? Um, everything in real estate is a win-win. There's no way to lose in real estate. Colton says, why is it called circle prospecting? You know, I, I was circle prospecting from day one back in 2002 when I got in real estate. Um, I didn't hear the term circle prospecting until about eight to 10 months ago. And, it, I, you know, to me, it's you're calling in a subdivision around a listing or a sale. Right. It doesn't have to be your listing or sell, just market activity. You're calling around that market activity and, you know, asking people what you can do for them. You know, how are you? How can I help you? I'm going to get into my phone scripts, but basically you're calling around market activity in a particular subdivision or neighborhood. So let me give it a couple more seconds here before I really get into it. Um, you know, one thing I want you guys to concentrate on is I really want you to line. I want you to start thinking about this. I want you to line up who you are as a person, who you are as a real estate agent, um, um, how you are as far as you mean well, you want to help people, you're a great person, you're dependable, you're hardworking, you're everything that a person would want in a realtor and really is a friend. I want you to start lining that up with how you're communicating with your prospects and clients. I think the problem is that most realtors mean well, right? They want the best for their clients, but they haven't really been trained how to effectively communicate who they are. 
right? And use their strengths, use their personality to line up with their communication so that they can effectively create relationships and make people feel comfortable with them and be likable, right? I think when you, you want it so bad, most of the mainstream training out there is about handling objections, going for the sale, going for the appointment, going for the listing. That doesn't really line up who you are with how you're communicating and the prospect can feel that. They can feel you, uh, you know, going for that sale. They can feel you going for it. So um, it kind of turns them off. There's a lot of realtors that give them that feeling that they just want the deal. So they're looking for something different. They're looking for somebody real. They want somebody with real personality who is their self and is actually out to help them, not necessarily concerned about the deal. You see, my philosophy is I'm okay with if someone decides that they don't want to do something, um, you know, like, like if they don't want to do it with me, that's fine. I don't really have a problem with, you know, if, if someone decides to use another real estate agent and that's what they think is best for them. I had one today, right? I had, I had a guy today. Um, we had, we had a miscommunication. Uh, it wasn't, you know, we didn't really start off on the right foot. And he straight up told me, I don't think this is a good fit. And I told him I completely understand and I could completely appreciate that and good luck. You know, I wish nothing but, but the best for him. It was a half a million dollar uh, listing, right? And so that kind of hurt, you know, like a lost one. It doesn't happen very often, but you don't connect with everyone, but your job is to figure out who you do connect with. So I want you guys to know too, this is not something where I'm gonna ask you to pay any money at the end. This is absolutely free. I'm gonna tell you everything. I'm never gonna charge you a dime. My coaching is completely 100% free. You can go to my website, zero to diamond.com and download all my scripts, watch videos of me making calls. I have an online course. I have a 90 day action plan. I have 30 day jumpstart program. I really have all the tools right there that you need to go crush it. And it's everything that I've built my business with, how I follow up my weekly email, so on and so forth. It's everything that, that I have learned over 16 years crammed into a website for you to go and learn everything that it took me 16 years to learn. Um, so why am I doing this, right? Um, my mission statement is to affect a million real estate agents, right? And I want to reduce the failure rate in the real estate industry. Point blank. That's, that's it. That's the bottom line. I want to reduce the failure rate in the real estate industry. And how am I going to do that? If every time you turn around, I'm asking you for $50, $200, $500, that's going to turn most people off. You're going to go somewhere else. And I'm not going to have the effect that I could have if I just give you everything for free. Because here's the thing, guys, everything is already out there for free. Go to YouTube, go read books, talk to successful real estate agents. They are willing to help. Everything is out there for free already. So why are people charging for it? Well, people are charging for it because people want to be close to whoever that is. They want to really find out what made them successful. I made a million dollars last year. I don't need the money, right? But I am probably where a lot of you guys want to be. Yes, there's plenty of real estate agents that have made more money than me, right? Last year, plenty of them. I'm a single agent. I'm in Alabama. Um, I did 130 deals last year, just me and one assistant. And it took me 16 years to figure out the secret to relationships over transactions. So it's something I want to share with the world. And what do I want in return? I want you guys to succeed. I want you to send me an email and said, I just got a listing off of using your phone script or I'm doing your weekly email and I've been doing it for three weeks and I just landed a buyer or I did a hundred deals this year. Um, you know, in three years, you're going to email me and say, I did a hundred deals this year and I did it based on your 90 day action plan. Right. That's the kind of stuff I want to hear. What's going to happen is, is I'm going to be a speaker. Right. I want to speak. I want to write. That's where my passion is. Getting in front of people, showing them the energy, giving them what they need to go succeed. That's what fires me up. OK, so sitting here trying to convince you guys to give me a couple hundred dollars is not my style. OK, so enough about that. I'm going to teach you guys today everything about my business and how I created a million dollars. Uh, real estate business. You know, I did a million dollars last year. I was the number one real estate agent in 
a number one Remax agent in Alabama last year. So I'm very humble. I don't like to brag. The number one last year to me really means it, 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 it really, what it stands for is everything I went through to get there, right? Um, I started in 02. I was 20 years old. I roofed houses before that with my father. I got in in 02. I did really well. It took me eight months to make my first sale, but once I started going, I was off to the races. I learned really early on that um, conversation, conversation, real conversation is the key to all closings. Voice to voice contact is the reason why technology is, has not and will not replace real estate agents. There has to be a conversation for there to be a closing. I don't care what your avenue of business is, online leads for sale by owners, expired, sign calls, whatever it is, circle prospecting, there has to be a conversation in place and a closing is nothing but a conversation that was converted into a relationship every single time. So whatever real estate agent talks to and has the most conversations with the most prospects in your market wins. It's really that simple. Um, so I learned that early on, right? But I didn't, I didn't have it all down. Like I didn't understand everything. The market blew up 2003, 2004, prices doubled. I made a ton of money. When the market crashed, I crashed. I lost it all. So by the time I'm 23, I'm a self-made millionaire. By the time I'm I'm 25, I'm broke and bankrupt. And that was the moment of truth for me. I really had to dig deep. And it was the best thing that happened to me because I had such a desire to figure out what I did wrong, how I was going to come back and stay back. So I read 100 books. I did this. I did that. I asked questions. I studied the market. And I came back in 2008. I went back to roofing houses and worked on an oil rig. Uh, I got back in 08. And it's very unique what I did in 08 to come back into the market. I actually purchased, with my oil rig money, I purchased a million email addresses. And I emailed every single one of them in 2008. And I said, hey, the, the condos on the beach are half the price they were a couple years ago. Who wants some? Out of those million email addresses, a thousand of those people emailed me back and 20 of those people bought something that year. And that was my foot back in the door. That was me getting back into real estate, thanking God for this second chance in real estate, something I love. I love real estate. I love the thrill of the deal and, and helping people, right? So when I got back in and I sold those, those properties to those buyers that I had emailed and started these relationships, then the oil spill hit. The BP oil spill hit our area super, super hard. Um, it, it was very, it was a crazy time. There was a lot of uncertainty. It was really scary. So um, during that time, we had a mini downturn. We had a little mini recession. So what I did is I took what I learned in the big recession and I, I didn't know if it would work, but I applied it in this mini recession. And so it, I, I was pretty excited for the opportunity to to try out my new theories on this mini recession. And what happened was, is I made more money in 2010, the year of the oil spill, a down market year, a scary year. I made more money that year than I did in 2009. Uh, so that's when I had the confidence to go to Remax. I always wanted to be at Remax, but uh, you know, I never really had the confidence with consistent closings to pay the desk fee. So when I made it through the oil spill, that's when I had the uh, confidence to move forward with that. So how did I make it through the oil spill? I'll tell you guys real quick. It's really cool, you know, theory of mine. When, when a market goes down, there's actually more um, opportunity. Um, let's say the market goes down and you lose you, whatever amount of transactions you lose, you lose more of a percentage of real estate agents in the area that leave the business. So if you have a, a minor crash and you have 10% less transactions, you probably lose 20, 25% of agents. What does that do? That creates more transactions per agent for the agents that stay, right? So why do the agents leave, right? If transactions go up, why do the agents leave? It's because when the market turns, whatever buyers they were working with, they change their mind and go away, right? And when those buyers go away, it scares the agents. So they leave the business too, thinking there's nothing. But what happens is, is a different kind of buyer emerges. The, a different kind of buyer, the, the buyer that emerges is an investor, right? The investors during a downturn, they want to buy and they want to buy right now because the market's down. They want to get it before it goes up, 
right? And on the flip side, there's people selling because they're either scared or in trouble, right? And they want to sell right now. Market downturns create urgency. And if you understand this and you know how to communicate with, with um, property owners and, and explain to them what, you know, what's going on, you're going to get all the business. And not only that, when the market comes back from the correction, you are going to have all the market share which by the way, guys, market share to me is not how many transactions you did, not how many listings you have. It's how many real relationships, real relationships you have in place with property owners in the area. Whatever agent has the most real relationships with property owners in the area owns the market share because they've got all the future business. We trade stocks on future earnings of companies. I trade market share of an agent on future earnings of that agent through relationships with property owners in the area. I don't care how many listings you got, how many, how many closings you had, how many this, how many that. I care about how many actual real relationships that you're cultivating and nurturing into the future. Right? So I came out of the oil spill. I went to Remax and I combined my theories of relationships over transactions with one of the greatest brands in real estate. And I created a monster. 2014, I did 100 deals. 15, I did 105. 16, I did 110 or so. Last year, I did 130 deals for over a million dollars in GCI. I was the number one REMAX agent in the state of Alabama, which to me, nobody cares that you're number one. When I hit number one, I started advertising it and I realized really quick that nobody cares. That was the least engaged post and, and I got the least amount of, of feedback off of whenever I said I'm number one. So, you know, the number one thing almost discredits you because everybody says they're number one. You can tweak it however you want to and say you're number one in this or that, right? I think people are more concerned with the fact that you care, you want to help them and that you're dependable, professional, knowledgeable, and you're going to do what you say. So the biggest takeaway, the biggest takeaway was relationships over transactions. I don't care how many appointments you got. I don't care how many listings you got. I want to know how many property owners gave you their email address or said, please stay in touch with me. We'll contact you when we get ready. You're going to run into deals today. You're going to run into deals today. You're a real estate agent and working. You're, if you're talking to enough people, you're going to do business. Guys, business is 100% unlimited. There's more business for each and every real estate agent than they can handle at all times. Therefore, your success is only predicated on how much can you handle. Right. I refer to it as a cup. Um, you know, uh, like everybody has a different size cup. Your cup represents how much you can handle at one time. My cup is really large. Right. I'm still doing 100,000 a month while I'm building a coaching business for free. Right. So that I can in turn build a great speaking business and author. Right. I want to be a great author and speaker. So I'm doing this at the same time. I have a very large cup. I can handle a lot. You have to figure out how big your cup is. How much can you handle? I think the problem is most people are scared to overwhelm themselves with business to find out where their breaking point is. You have to overwhelm yourself. You have to just go for it and overwhelm yourself so that you can figure out how much you can actually handle. And how much you can handle is going is going to dictate how successful you're going to be. It really boils down to that in, in a sense, in a very simple sense it really boils down to that. So that's kind of a little bit about my background and a little bit about my philosophies I threw in there. Um, comment right now and just tell me real quick. I'll give it 10 seconds why you're here. Like, why are you watching me right now? What's motivating you? Is it your kids going to college? Is it your you want a bigger house? Is it you want to go on a vacation? You just want to be a millionaire. You want to help people. You want to feed people for Thanksgiving. Why are you here? You know, you want to build more business. Why? Why? I want to know why. This helps me get to know you guys a little better. I know that there's probably half the people watching have already been following me for a while. The other half are probably brand new. And so we're all getting to know each other here. And I want to know a little bit about your why. I'm going to scroll through some comments right now, see if there's any questions I need to answer before I, before I go any further. Michael wants to know how much did a million emails addresses cost? Um, I, I did 400 here, 200 there, 500 there. It was about $3,000 at the end of the day. 
Um, Joshua wants to know what were the most helpful books. I will, I'll be the I'll be honest. The most helpful books for me, there was three that really hit home for me. There was the there was the 10x rule, Grant Cardone. That one was like a game changer. Slight Edge. I'm going to talk about the Slight Edge later. Slight Edge is was is the best book I've ever read by Jeff Olson. It will change your life. It's mind blowing, and it talks about the simple things every day that add up to something huge in the end. Right. So CC Redman wants to know where is the weekly email? I'm going to post a copy of my weekly email in the Facebook or I do post it every single week on Wednesday in the Facebook group for you guys to check out. Um, so, you know, let's see. How do you make yourself more likable? CC says by not pressuring them to buy or sell and actually asking them why they're wanting to buy or sell. Right. Finding out what's going on in their life, deep in their life that's causing them to make that decision and actually focusing on that instead of the fact that they want to buy or sell. That's how you become likable. Let's see. Looks like, looks like the video is freezing for some people. I'm sorry about that. I don't think it's on my end. Let's see. Colton. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Let's see here. Ricky, how do you deal with someone who calls to list two properties? Everything goes well. And then he just stops communicating back when it's time to list. You can, I mean, you can't, you put, put a gun to somebody's head, right? You got to keep moving forward. The thing is, is that you have so many prospects and so many deals going on that one deal is not your make it or break it. You got to do what's best for your clients and you got to keep moving forward at the same time. Okay. Matt wants me to post a list of the, of my top books. I will do that in the Facebook group after this webinar. Would like to build a multi-million dollar business, getting back in the business after being away for a while. Uh, was very successful. Want to learn while the market is now. Vacations. You're obviously great at Facebook marketing. Can you help us with Facebook marketing? I can help you with Facebook marketing. Absolutely, I can help you with Facebook marketing. Craig Moore says, where did I get the emails? I just Googled buy emails, right? And I just bought emails. A lot of them were bogus, but some of them were good. It's like when you buy phone numbers online, well, most of them are bad, but there's some good ones in there. And those good ones are what you work with. Let's see. I want to help people. I want to become the best circle prospector. I want to produce like you, Ricky. Let's see. Let's see. A hundred plus a year, a hundred plus transactions. I'd like to be a bigger. Cool, guys. I appreciate all this. It's helping me. I'm going to go through all these afterwards because I want to read each and every one of them. And I want to get to know you guys more and more and more okay all right so the first thing i want you to know uh, there's probably a lot of newer agents on here or whatever the first thing i want you to realize is that okay wait a second 10 actual slight edge and oh the third book was uh gary keller's uh shift gary keller's shift really really changed uh, a lot of stuff for me because that was when the market was down when i read that book and shift was about when a market shifts, how to handle it, what to watch for, what to do. And it, and it really broke it down for me. Um, and, it, and it really was an eye opener. So I, I really enjoyed that. It, it made me feel good, even though I was working on an oil rig and I was down and out and I was feeling, you know, like, where's my life going? And I read that book on the oil rig. I was, I was in my bunk in the oil rig reading this book. And it really made me feel good about life. I felt so confident that it was going to be all right. And I was going to do real estate again. And I was going to, I was going to crush it. Let's see. Let's see. Um, let's see. All right. All right. Just making sure there's no questions here. I see John John has a question, but it's really a long one. So I don't, I don't have time to read all that John John. So just get with me afterwards. Or I'll, or I'll come back to it at the end. I want to get into my content here. I know a lot of people were 24 minutes in. So here's the thing. Um, okay, one question I want to answer. Hey, Ricky, do you pro circle prospect in higher price endpoints? Yes, I circle prospect in several different price points. This is why, because um, like I want to diversify my farm. I don't want to just be stuck on million dollar or 500,000 or 200,000. I would like a subdivision in 200 and one in 500, one in a million. That way, my, my, my price range of my different, I'm diversified. My, my farm portfolio is diversified. That way, 
if it's if it slows down the million dollar stuff the 500 stuff picks up if the if, if the 500 stuff picks up and the 200 slows down i'm good if the 200's up and everything else is slow i'm still good so i want to create relationships across the board in all those different price ranges okay so the first thing i got i want you guys to know is is that if you look in your mls you'll find that closings are happening every single day every day tons of closings every single day right um, so, you know, when I talk to agents about getting, or, or people come to me asking me about, you know, should I get in real estate? I'm scared. It's not consistent, right? The thing is, is real estate is one of the most consistent things in the world. There's closings happening every single day, regardless, right? Regardless of what's going on. So that's something very important to know and to realize and i don't think anybody might never even told said it like that to you but closings are happening every single day business is 100 percent unlimited it's all predicated on how much you can handle so when you break it down like that what does that really tell us right that tells us that business is happening we're just not doing the business because we don't have the experience yet Right. That's all it is. That's the only difference between you and doing the deals is experience to figure out how to do the deals. So um, like as far as like there's two ways to learn stuff. Right. And in real estate, you have to have both. There's there's the way of webinars like this, reading books, watching my YouTube, Instagram, you know, all the different going to seminars, all the different ways that you that you, you know, learn. OK, all that stuff. And you can learn real estate within like a week or two. You can learn all about it and have really have it down. But the other part of how to learn is through experience. You can learn all you want to, but without experience, you don't have anything. And that's what frustrates new agents because they come in, they learn everything on YouTube or read a book. And then they think, boom, I'm fixing to crush it. But then they don't sell anything for three or four months or five or six or 10 months. Right. And they get frustrated. They're like, what am I doing wrong? I'm doing everything that the, that, that the thing said, but nothing's happening. It's because you have to learn the process. You have to learn exactly what, what the process is. You have to gain that experience. You know what I mean? It, it's, it's so, so I want you to know that as well. Even though you might think that you know everything that you need to know about real estate in your mind, you also have to realize that without gaining the experience you need to actually make it happen on a consistent basis, it's not going to happen, right? This stuff is all mindset. Even, even the hard work part, even, even the physical hard work part is all mindset, right? The, the, the mindset is, is that number one, there, real estate is a win-win. There's no way to lose. Every single loss is a win. When you lose a deal, when you're going after a listing and that that owner decides to use another agent, a lot of agents get hurt. They're, they're, they're hurt. It stings and they're down on their self. They, they don't you know, they're just they think about it a lot. Here's here's the here's the act. Here's the reality of it. Number one, there's the cliche stuff about you learn something. Right. And it's true. You learn something. Um, and you need to take that and, and every little thing you learn, it molds you into a better agent. But here's here's the big thing. The big thing with losing a deal. What's the most valuable asset to us? Right. The most valuable asset to us as humans is time. Right. You can replace all your money. You cannot replace time now. You know, uh, as far as being alive, I mean, if you die, then of course, of course, your health is actually the most. But but time is the most valuable asset. So when you lose a deal, when you lose a deal, that is the only situation where you actually get time back. You get future time back that you don't have to spend on that deal anymore. You don't have to go get the listing sign, take pictures, put a sign up, show the property, negotiate the deal. Deal with the this, deal with the that, go to the closing. There's hours and hours and hours that you get back. And when people lose a deal, they're so down on their cell, right? They just, they're, they're hurt, you know? When in reality, they should say, okay, I learned why I lost it. Now I have all this future time. Let's take advantage of it. Let's go, let's go, let's go, right? Let's go, let's keep going. Let's live. Who else can I talk to? Who else can I talk to? I'm not gonna make that mistake again. But I want to take advantage of all this future time I just got back because I lost that deal. Every lost deal is great because you lost something, you get future time back. If you would really get that in your head, if you really get that inside of your head, it's going to help you a whole lot because 
because this is where a lot of people go wrong. They start dwelling on the one that got away instead of focusing on the good ones that, that are that are coming and also the ones that they don't see yet because they need to be calling new people and talking to new prospects and creating new business. Right. Stay positive. Keep moving forward. Don't move backward. Don't think about that. Learn from it and use that future time to move forward. I lose people a lot on the future time thing. And a lot of people hear me say, you know, when you lose a deal, that's great. And a lot of people don't. They, it's hard for them to comprehend that. But I hope you guys get it because it's an amazing thing. And once I actually learned this, my whole life changed because every deal I lost, I was like, yes. And then I just went to another one. Yes. And I got it and I got it and I got it and I lost one. Oh, well, boo, boo, boo. I don't have to spend time on that one anymore. I'm going to go get some more. So take the time that you that you get back from losing a deal. Take the new knowledge that you got from losing a deal and go get five more deals in the same time that it would have took you to do that one deal. Mic drop. So closings happen every day. Business is 100 percent unlimited. OK, so the common denominator. OK, between all closings. I'll take five seconds. Type it in real quick. What do you guys think is the common denominator between all closings? I'm going to scroll through some comments here and see if we've got any questions while you guys are. John G says, Ricky, will this be posted later? Yes, it's on Facebook Live here. And so you can watch it here forever. It'll be here and also on YouTube. I'll have it up on YouTube probably Sunday or Monday. Elizabeth said, just be careful not for me not to get caught up spending so much time with webinars and classes. Then you'll become information overload and then stand still. Trust me, I will not stand still. Let's see. Do you think farming is a lost art because the Internet seems to be in my area? Yes, I do. I think a lot of people shy away from farming. You know, they're being taught to, to call for sale owners and expireds and to do Internet leads. And I think all those things work. Guys, let me let me make this clear. I believe that everything works. I believe everything works for sell by owners, internet leads, expires, circle prospecting, whatever it is. I believe that everything works. It just, there's two things. One, I believe consistency with anything works. Two, you need to be, figure out what's most efficient for you. And I think you should have a mindset focused around relationships, right? There's four keys to long term success, in my opinion. You have to believe. Right. A hundred percent fully committed. You have to work hard. Right. You have to adapt as you go along. Try new things. See what works. Don't do the same thing. And then you got to be patient. Right. If any of you guys or I can talk to anybody for five minutes or so. Anybody who thinks that they're not successful or not successful as they want to be. I can talk to you for five minutes and figure out which one of these four you're lacking in. Believe, work hard, adapt and being patient. Four keys. OK, so some of you guys say relationship with the client. Some 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 people. OK, as far as common denominator of a closing, some people are saying. Uh, relationship, you got to work for it. You just have to be consistent, build future relationships, agent service, con uh, uh, consistency, keep in touch with the agent, person to person contact. A lot of good answers. Some people are actually saying the right answer because they follow me and they know what <laughs> they know what I'm fixing to say. But it's conversation. There's no I said it before earlier. There, there's no closing that has ever happened in the world of history that hasn't happened with a conversation in place. Right. So closings are conversations that are converted into real relationships with people. you got to find out why people want to buy or sell, not the fact that they do. Right. You have to. How can I say this? You just have to be you and you have to be caring. Right. It's like I said earlier, you have to line up who you are with how you communicate. I'm going to get into my phone scripts in just a second. I have a phone script that I have come up with that's been working incredible for all kinds of agents. Um, it's 100 percent. Everything I do is free again, by the way. And it, the, the 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 script. It, it begins a real relationship. Uh, let's see. Don't mean to be cranky, but I just came for the circle prospecting webinar and I need to get into another meeting. So 
help you. It, it'll be this will be on a replay, guys. You can watch this right here in the Facebook group uh, anytime you want to. OK, conversations are the key to all closings. Now, now, who are the highest quality prospects? Type that one in. I'm going to give that five or 10 seconds. Who are the highest quality prospects in the market, in any market? I see you guys on Instagram. OK, question on Instagram. How do I avoid complacency? I've never had complacency. I don't understand that because I'm so happy. Like I'm so happy in life. I'm just so happy, period. Happiness is what motivates me. I love what I do. I love helping people. I love selling real estate. I love doing webinars. I love all of this stuff. So, so you have to do what you love to do. And I know that sounds cliche, but when you deeply love it so much that it energizes you and it comes out of you, that's how I avoid complacency. Okay, a lot of people are saying property owners because I'm sure they follow me. <laughs> yes, property owners. Property owners are the highest quality prospects. Okay, guys, they, they buy and sell. I focus only on property owners. I don't do buyer leads. I don't advertise for buyers whatsoever. I concentrate on property owners as my source of buyers and sellers. A lot of people think of property owners as just sellers. But really, they're buyers and sellers. They're your best buyers. They already know all the ins and outs of ownership. They already know the property taxes, maintenance, insurance, utilities. They already know all the stuff that the that the that the first time home buyer is going to ask you, and you're going to. It's going to take time for you to research. You don't have to go through all that education time. They already know what they want. They already know how to get it. They just need a real estate agent to help them complete the transaction. So, property owners are your best buyers, right? And they're a source of listings. Listings are the greatest multiplier of time in the history of real estate. You can pile up listings. You can get a, you can grow a nice inventory of listings and have plenty of time every day to continue building more business while those listings are, are, are being sold by the thousand or 2000 or 20,000 agents in your market. It's, it's an incredible philosophy and setup for us as real estate agents. It's amazing. We can work a deal with the seller, put it on the market, and then thousands of agents are trying to sell it for us while we go get more listings. Now, if I run into a buyer, great. I don't discriminate. I'm not a listing agent. I'm not a buyer's agent. I'm a real estate agent. I love helping everybody, but I'm going to be most efficient. That's how I do so much, so many deals is because I work very efficient and I'm, I'm super smart about where I allocate my time, right? And I know where to be and where not to be. Um, and I know how hard I need to push on certain things. I know what's worth pushing at. You can't push at everything. And a lot of people are pushing at things that aren't really the right places to push on stuff. I think another big thing on a side note is reputation. Reputation with local agents is huge. Um, even if they piss you off, you need to keep your cool and, and smile and be and, and, and take the take the high road with with local agents because you're going to deal with them again. And you always want you want everybody to talk good about you. Right. If somebody gets on your nerves or does something wrong in a deal, just just handle it very professionally. Be professional. OK. So, OK, closings happen every day. Conversations, the key to all these closings. Property owners are the highest quality prospects. You see where I'm going with this? And really, to be honest with you, I don't care if you do for sale by owners, expireds, or circle prospecting, right? It's all the same if you approach it in a low pressure manner and find out why they want to do what they're doing and then help them accomplish that and then follow up forever. My follow up, I'll tell you, is a weekly email on the same day of the week forever. It's been going out since 2007. It is the secret of my business. The weekly email report, I post it in this Facebook group every Wednesday. You can scroll down after the webinar. You can scroll down and see last week uh, or a couple of days ago. No, I didn't post it because I was in Ocala doing the doing the speech. I'll post it when I get off here. I'll post my, uh, my weekly email. I'll post it in the group so you guys can see it. But it is the secret. It's the glue that holds everything together. I have over 10,000 people receiving this weekly email. I have made... 100,000 calls in my career, circle prospecting. 
out of those 100,000 calls, I collected 5,000 or some odd email addresses. I've collected another 5,000 some odd email addresses through people that have just inquired about buying or I got the email address from wherever, right? So I have about 10,000 people that receive this email. 3,000 of these people open it up every week. It goes out every Wednesday since 2007 and will go out for the rest of my life because that's how I keep relevant with my clients. I'm in front of them every week, giving them market information, new listings, feature properties, closed sales, um, articles on the area, pictures of the area, you know, what I've sold, everything is right there for them to stay in tune with me and the market. And they know it's not high pressure. I'm not saying buy now, sell now. <clears throat> I'm very, I'm just trying to provide information. I'm trying to provide value. I see myself as an information provider who just happens to be a real estate agent who will do anything to help you, right? Okay, so my circle prospecting process is really simple, okay? Research, role play, right? I make the calls, right? I'm gonna, I'm gonna create relationships, right? And then I want to convert. The conversion happens now or later, right? It may not happen today. It may happen today or it may happen later. Most of my deals, most of my deals come from people I cold called years ago, right? They come from cold calls from five years ago, 10 years ago, right? Or a mail out or a postcard or, or a Facebook ad from years ago. Well, I've only been doing social media for a year, but, you know, phone call, postcard, or I've done Facebook ads for about a year and I've got people that have been watching it for a year who call me. So it takes time to build up. But here's here's the magic that everybody misses. They, they see all this. They see how it takes a long time to develop and they think, I can't wait that long. I need business now. The thing is that I want to get into your head is that you're going to get business now if you start doing this, if you start contacting people, people want to buy or sell. There's closings happening every day. Who, who is buying and selling all this property? Like people are buying and selling property. You're not just going to be in a market where closings are happening every day and you're calling hundreds of people and just not running into anybody that wants to buy or sell anything. Not going to happen. Right. Most of them are not going to want to buy or sell today, but you're talking to them anyway. Why not take that time that you're talking to them anyway, cultivate a relationship for the future? Because here's here's a here's a breakthrough. Here, here's some numbers for you. Less than one percent of people will buy or sell the first time you talk to them. Less than one percent. Right. But I believe that a good 20 to 30 percent of people you talk to like you enough to do a deal with you, they're just not ready yet. I believe 20 to 30% like your personality, they see something in you that they like, that they would do business with you, just not ready yet. They haven't decided it's time. They're gonna do something in a year, two years, three years, next month, right? But if you don't pressure them, you establish a relationship, you send them a weekly email every week on the same day forever, who's gonna be their agent when the time comes? You have a very good shot. Trust me, this is what I do. This is how I do it. This is how I create business. Okay, so research and role play, um, make the calls, create the relationships, and then convert through the weekly email. That weekly email develops the relationships for you, right? When it comes on the same day of the week, forever, every single week like clockwork, it proves to them how consistent and hardworking you are, professional, knowledgeable, dependable, right? It does all the heavy lifting for you to develop that relationship. You don't have to worry about them. You can just let them get that email. They'll call you when they get ready. That's the business I've built. People that call me when, when they get ready. I made 100,000 calls. I did, you know, 500 deals through that. And then after that, I've done about 500 more of people that just call me from the 100,000 calls. They get a weekly email from me. That's really kind of like the, the, the foundation, like that's kind of the, the timeline, you know, of, of events here. Um, so, okay, what not to say? 
right? I'm going to get into the script. I want to say what not to say first. And I want to say about voicemails because I get a lot of questions about voicemails. Five times a day, I get an email about what about voicemails? So what I don't want you to say is I don't want you to call up and say, hey, I'm calling every all the other I'm, I'm, I'm calling every owner in your neighborhood or I'm calling the neighborhood. Um, or I'm just calling the, the 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 owners in your neighborhood. Don't say this because that's telling them that, hey, you're just another number on my big list of people. I'm just kind of going through the motions here, calling all the neighbors, all your neighbors. So you're just, I'm just, you're just another number to me. You don't want to do that. You want to make them feel special that maybe you, they're the only ones that, that you call. And even though you know that, they know that it's the tone of your voice and it's how you communicate. Remember, line up who you are with how you communicate, right? And it's the little things, it's the words you're using, right? When they say they're not interested in doing anything, do not say, who do you know that might be interested in buying or selling? Because when you say, who do you know, what that's really telling them is, is, hey, Mr. Owner, you can't help me, right? I'm only looking for somebody that's going to help me, so you can't help me. So do you know anyone else that can help me? So you're turning the whole conversation into it's about you instead of where it should be, which is about them, right? And... You know, we're trying to get emails. That's our thing, right? We want to get the email. I'm going to show you how in a second, but we don't want to say, hey, is it okay if I send you a market report? Can I email you my market report every week? There again, that's telling them that they're on a big list of people and they're just another number to you. You want to say, hey, I want to stay in touch with you. Is that all right? What's your email address? That's how you get the email. Okay. So voicemails, real quick, voicemails. Um, people really get stumped with voicemails. I get the question all the time, all the time. It's crazy. Uh, with voicemails, for me, it's just a branding tool. I'm not trying to do anything special. I'm not trying to get them to call me back. I'm not trying to, I just want them to hear my name, phone number, company, you know, and that I'm working, that I'm because I'm calling people. That's what I want. I, I don't necessarily, if they call me back, great. If they don't, I'm not, that's not my focus. My focus is just brand myself with them through the voicemail. So I'm going to say, hey, this is Ricky Kruth over at Remax of Orange Beach. Give me a call back when you get a chance about whatever subdivision. You can reach me at this number. I'll talk to you soon. It can be as simple as that. I do switch it up, but it's basically that. Um, and they just hear my name. And if they hear it enough and they see my signs and billboards and Facebook ads and emails and postcards and letters, it's all going to add up, right? All the little little things are going to add up to the whole, which is you are real. How do you stand out in real estate? You stand out by being the most consistent guy. There's so many fly-by-night realtors, and the owners are tired of they don't want a you know they 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 have a new realtor come in they're like oh yeah you're a new you know had never heard never heard your name before so you know okay and then they never hear from them again because they got out of the business. Right. Or they're there for a year, you know, but they're gone. But the realtors that they see consistently, right, for three, four, five years, 10 years, 20 years, people know that that realtor is here to stay, knows what he's doing, is successful and will get the job done. Right. That's how you stand out, being consistent, staying in front of them over the long haul and outlasting all the other realtors. All right. Let me see if there's any quick questions and I'm going to get right into, let's see. Okay. This person says, don't talk like you're reading from a script. We're going to get into that. Uh, let's see. Let's see. What's up, Zach Manick? Let's see. Okay. Craig says, how long were you calling? How long were you calling per day when you first started? Eight hours? Yes. I looked, I didn't have a dialing system. When I started real estate, there was no Facebook, Zillow, uh, dialers, any of this stuff. I had to look up a hundred numbers all night and call them all day. And it took me eight hours because I had to dial it with my finger. A hundred calls every day. Let's see. Okay. Is my email automated or customized by you? I sit down for an hour to two hours every Wednesday or whenever I do it and create that email. I sit down and create all the content in my email. That's what makes it unique. 
That's how people feel a little personality in the email. And that's how they really, that's how, that's why it works, right? Because I work for it. I'm not looking for a quick e. I'm not looking for something easy. I want something that works. I don't care how hard it is. And that's why it works. Do I use a email widget or tool to, I use constant contacts guys. No, I, uh, do I always use my listings in my email or new listings on MLS? I use all the listings in the whole area is on every single email of mine. I'm just reading through some of the comments here before I get into my phone script. What are the best ways to make money in the early years? I'm telling you, go to zero to diamond.com, print out the 90 day action plan and get to work. It's totally free. Do I ever call the number? Do I ever call the number again after I leave a voicemail? No, they didn't answer for a reason. They're just notorious non answerers. So I'm not going to call them again. I'm not going to waste that dial on somebody that might actually answer. I'm going to keep moving forward. Can I use your, your script for door knocking? Should I leave the information about the home that I'm telling them about that listed or sold? Yes, my script can be used for door knocking, expires, for sale by owners, buyer leads, anything. My phone script is universal. Jonas says he picked up four seller leads today using my scripts. Okay, cool. That looks like all the questions for now. I'm going to get into my script. So here we go. All right. So I've done, I've done the research, right? The research to me, Red X is the best for, uh, okay, go where for the 90 days? Zero to diamond.com. Just click on the free training, sign up and download all my phone scripts, videos of me making calls, 90 day action plans, all that stuff. Jeff McLaurin says, what dialer service do I use? I use Red X or Mojo. Okay, so check this out, guys. Um, the way that I find my numbers is through Red X. Like, it is the best way. Um, that's the, high, the, the highest quality phone numbers that I've found. And I've tried a lot of different ways. Um, some of them are cell phone numbers. The quality is... The quality is, you know, you, you're, you're finding them online, so it's not, there are bad numbers in there, but this is the best quality. You find the most good ones in Red X. Um, it's really, really good. Um, if you go to Zero to Diamond and sign up, there's a link there with Red X, and they'll waive the $150 startup fee for you. Okay, all my members get to save the $150 startup fee for Red X, get Geo Leads. Geo leads, you get to put an address in the search bar and then find up to 500 owners around that address and one click of a button, get all their phone numbers, right? Then you can get the storm dialer if you want to call them from Red X and start dialing them right there, there, okay? So that's how you find the phone numbers. You're going to research your MLS, right? You're going to find out what price range you want to be in, find out what subdivision you want to hit and... Uh, you're, you're basically gonna gonna look up the, all the numbers in that that subdivision, and you're gonna pull up all the comps, all the comps in that subdivision. Um, you're gonna see like the past year worth of sales, everything pending, everything active. You want that in front of you in on one sheet of paper. That way, when you're talking and you need to, they ask you a question about the market, you can jump right on it. Okay. So you got the number, you found the numbers, you got them hooked up into the dialer, you got all the comps right in front of you and you're ready to start making your calls. Ring, 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 hello. Mr. Johnson, I like to say Mr. Johnson with a question mark because I wanna make everything short and sweet. No, Eric, there's no reason why I didn't mention Call Realty. Call, Call Realty does the same thing, right? They like, there's several of these. Mojo finds them. Cole Realty, Onyx, I guess. I see a comment, Onyx, Red X, right? I just like Red X the best. I've tried them all, and, and I feel like Red X has the best quality. Um, that's why I use them. So let's see. Elizabeth says, what about the do not call list? They mark do not call list, and that's just a personal decision you have to make. I'm not telling you. I'm telling you not to call do not call list, but I will tell you I'm not worried about the do not call list. I have called the do not call list. I've never had a problem. What about Onyx for emails? Never tried Onyx for emails. 
Okay, so phone strip. Let me get through this. Mr. Johnson? Yeah, this is Mr. Johnson. Hey, Mr. Johnson, this is Ricky Carruth down at Remax of Orange Beach. How you doing today? Oh, we're doing good. How about you? Yeah, I'm doing good too. Enjoying the day. Isn't it gorgeous outside? Yeah, yeah, it's it's a good day. Yeah, da 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 da. Okay. So if you notice, guys, the beginning of the call is a question, right? You make sure that you're talking to the right person. Then we introduce ourselves and ask them how they're doing today, right? We're going to use very nice tone. When we're talking to people, we want to be in the same Zen, same mindset as if we're talking to our mom or dad or brother or cousin or some family member that we've known forever, best friend from high school. That feeling when you're talking to your family, that's how you want. That's the tone you want. That's the feeling you want. That's what you want in your stomach. That's how you want to be very calm and very friendly and very inviting, right? So when we ask them how they're doing, that is a setup to read them. We want to see how they're doing today, literally. We want to see if they're busy, happy, sad, mad, right? So, hey, yeah, this is Ricky Crew through Remix of Orange Beach. How are you doing today? Yeah, we're doing good. Oh, good. Look, yeah, I'm, I'm in, I'm, me too. I'm enjoying the day. Isn't it gorgeous outside? So right there, what I'm doing is, is, I'm, is I'm saying something about the weather and I'm asking a question at the end. That is another setup to see, to read the person on the phone and to throw them off a little bit and loosen them up by not talking about real estate immediately. I don't want to go right into real estate, right? This is, you want to approach them like they're a friend or a family. Okay, so Mr. Johnson, yes, Mr. hey, Mr. Johnson, this is Ricky Carruth down at Remax of Orange Beach. How you doing? Good, good. Yeah, me good, me too. I'm just enjoying the day. Isn't it gorgeous outside? Or Oh, I'm just trying to stay dry. Isn't it nasty out there? Or I'm doing good too, man. How was your How was your fourth? How was your New Year's? How was your Christmas? You getting ready for Christmas, right? It can be anything. It needs to be a question, and it needs to be designed to not go right into real estate. Loosen them up, right, and read them. This phone script is really deep. There's a lot of reasons why I have every little part of the phone script. Okay, so. Right there comes the awkward. Here comes the awkward part of the call when you said something about the weather. And then it's like, uh, yeah, the weather, yeah, join it. What are you calling me for kind of thing, right? That's the first transition of the phone call. That's when you're going to say, I got you. Well, look, I don't want to take up too much of your time today, but a house down the road from you just sold, and I didn't know if there's anything I could do to help you today, right? We're not asking what they want to buy or sell. We're asking them if there's anything we can do for them today, right? So see what I did. I transitioned from the weather. I transitioned to that as, I got gotcha. you. Well, look, I don't want to take up too much of your time today. That's what you got to get down right there. That's what you got to be ready for. You got to be ready to jump right into that. I got gotcha. you. Well, look, is there any, I don't want to take up too much of your time today. What it does is, is you're not asking them, hey, are you busy? Or, hey, is now a good time? You're not asking them because they might answer and say no. You're telling them. You want to respect their time, but a house down the road sold. Didn't know if there's anything I could do for you. Right? This is how you actually create relationships, guys. This is how you stand out by having a different script than every other real estate agent out there. This is how you actually build a big business and show prospects that you actually care about what's going on in their life. This is how you approach people low pressure. This is how you show them that you don't care about a deal, that you're not there to do a deal because you didn't even ask them if they wanted to do a deal. Can I get an amen? Somebody give me an amen, a hallelujah, something. So once I get to that part of the call and I say, I got you. Well, look, I don't want to take up too much of your time today, but a house down the road sold. I didn't know if there's anything I could do for you. They could say a number of things right there. They could say yes. If they say yes, then we're going to say, I got you. Cool. Is there an agent that you're working with on that deal? Right. Is there an agent that you're working with on that deal? You want to go down that road and see if there's an agent that they're working with. And if not, then, hey, I would love to work with you. When can we meet? When can we look at the property? Da, 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 right? If they do have an agent, then not much you can do. If their mom is an agent, 
See, this is where a lot of people go wrong. They have a great conversation with a prospect. They think they have a brand new client and everything is just going great. And then, but they didn't ask them if they had an agent that they might work with. And now their mom's an agent, their best friend's an agent, their brother's an agent, their uncle's an agent. And no matter how much they like you, they'll never use you. So you have to pre-qualify them if they already have a relationship in place with another agent. Does that make sense, guys? So let's see. Instagram is off. It only goes for an hour. So Instagram is over. Okay. So, okay. Let's see. Where was I? Uh, oh, let's see. Okay. I got you. Well, look, I don't want to take up too much of your time today, but a house down the road just sold, or I just listed a house, or I just sold a house, or I just put a house under contract and I didn't know if there's anything I could do to help you today. Right? Marta, I don't know what you're asking me to say again. Please clarify and I will repeat. If they say no, if they say yes, we're going to say, okay, I got you. Well, look, is there an agent you're working with on that particular situation? And just follow that rabbit hole. See how deep it goes. But if they say no, which is the most, the highest percentage response, when they say no, we're going to say, I got you. Well, look. Is there an agent in the area that you would work with if you were to buy or sell something? See what that does? We're pre-qualifying them in this first conversation we're ever going to have with them. If there's an opening for a relationship with for us as the agent and them as the prospect. Yes. So we're going to say, is there anything to do for you? They say, no, we say, I got you. We'll look. And guys, like I said, you can download these scripts right off my website, zero to diamond.com. They're right there. Charge is zero because I want to see you guys when I come to your, to your town or somewhere near you to speak. I want to see you. I want you to come out and I want you to show me some love. That's what I'm after. I'm after the love when I go speak in your town. That's why it's free. And you guys, I can I can share everything with you if it's free. I don't have to hold back. When I was holding back because I wanted you guys to pay me because I wasn't giving you my scripts before because I wanted you to pay me, that's not me. I don't want to hold back. I want to actually help you. This is a win-win for me and you. I get to help you. You get to go succeed. You come see me when I speak. You buy my next book coming out. So back to the script. When they say no, I got you. Well, look, is there an agent in the area that you would work with if you were to buy or sell something? Yes. Okay, cool. Who is it? I might know them. Oh, yeah, I know them. They're a great agent. Look, if there's ever anything I can do for you, you're in great hands. But if there's ever anything I can do for you, please let me know. Have a good day. Bye bye. Okay. At that point, even if they're lying about having another agent, it's like, you know, if there's two negatives there. They said they don't want to do anything, buying or selling, and they said they have an agent. So it's like there's two negatives. That's not a moment to push back. It's just not a moment to push back. So, but here's the other, here, the, the highest percentage that I find is that people don't have a relationship in place with an agent. They don't have an agent in mind that they would work with if they were to buy or sell, right? Or at least that's what they say. They don't have one. So when they say, and I'm going to go through this whole script here in a minute. I'm going to go through it here in just a second. We're going through the whole thing. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just piecing it out in details along the way so that you can understand the full philosophy behind what I'm doing. This is not a cookie cutter BS phone script. This actually creates lifelong relationships with property owners, period. So, uh, no, I don't have an agent. Okay, well, look, I'm sure at some point in the future, I don't know, maybe five or 10 years down the road, you might buy or sell something. And I would just love the opportunity to work with you when that day comes. Would it be okay if I stayed in touch with you? Right? What's your email address? Boom. Now, <clears throat> there's 126 people watching right now live. For you 126 people and all the people that watch on the replay, I'm going to release the next episode. I think it's episode 54 of The Daily Grind. I'm going to release it tomorrow on YouTube and Facebook. 
And I did live cold calls at, at Remax of Orange Beach in front of the whole company. And it shows a live cold call of me doing this script and getting the email address. So watch the daily grind when I post it tomorrow and watch this in action in a live call. You can also go to zero to diamond.com and, and watch. there's two videos of me making about a hundred calls a piece, live cold calls, going through this entire script, getting email addresses, creating business. I even got a listing on one of those uh, videos. Okay. So <clears throat> here's the philosophy behind the end of the call. You don't have an agent. I got you. We'll look. I'm sure at some point you're going to want to buy or sell something. I would love the opportunity to work with you when that day comes. Would it be okay if I stayed in touch with you? Sure. Okay. What's your email address? What happens there is, is I ask them if it's okay to stay in touch, which is a non-threatening thing because I'm not asking for an email address. I'm not asking for anything personal. I'm just saying, hey, is it okay if I stay in touch? They're thinking, phone, they're gonna, I'm going to call them every six months. But they say, sure, you can stay in touch because they're thinking no harm, no foul. And then I drop the hammer on them and say, great, what's your email address? That's how I stay in touch with people. And if you, if you ask them if it's okay to stay in touch before you ask for the email address and you get them to commit to wanting to, you to stay in touch, nine times out of 10, you're going to get the email address. Um, let's see, Robin brings up a good point. How many calls are you making these days per day? Do you still have to? I don't make any because I don't have to because I made 100,000. Everybody watching and everybody watching this on the replay needs to go make 100,000 phone calls over the next five years, six years, seven years. And then if you do it right, if you establish relationships, if you do weekly emails, you won't have to make any phone calls anymore. And people just call you to do business all the time and you have more business than you can handle. Uh, let's see. So let me go back through the phone script from top to bottom real quick. Make sure everybody's got it. Um, then I'm going to go through and answer some questions. I want to get to all of your questions um, and, and that'll be a wrap. OK, so. Uh, let's see where we're going to start here. Ring, ring, ring. Hello, Mr. Johnson. Hey, Mr. Johnson, this is Ricky Carruth, Remax of Orange Beach. How you doing today? Good, good. Yeah, I'm, I'm just enjoying the day, man. It is a gorgeous day, isn't it? I got you. Well, look, I don't want to take up too much of your time today, but I just listed a house down the road from you, and I didn't know if there's anything I could do for you today. No, I got you. Well, look, man, do you have an agent in the area that you would work with if you were to buy or sell something? No? Well, shoot, man, listen, I'm sure at some point you're going to want to buy or sell something in the future. I don't know when, but I would love the opportunity to work with you when that day comes. Would it be all right if I just stayed in touch with you? Cool. What's your email address? Boom. That's, that is the phone script. Now, I love to take it a step further, right? Because I want to build that relationship really hardcore. I want to really go deep. So what do I do then? I want to try to get a lunch appointment. Right. If we're really hitting it off and I get them talking, see at the end when they give me their email address, I want to see if they'll keep talking. You know, <clears throat> maybe we connected with something. Maybe the conversation went some way, you know, that you're unexpected, but it ended up being something you connected on. You need to take advantage of those situations. You're going to run into people who you just connect with because you you went you went you went to the same high school or you went to high school with his son or, you know, this person or that person or you both hunt or you like this or you like that, Use take advantage of those opportunities to connect with people. And if you're feeling it, don't do it every time, but if you're feeling it, say, look, what are you doing next week? I'd love to catch, I'd love to catch lunch with you. You know, get to know you a little bit, put a face with the name, hang out for a minute, right? No harm, no foul. So I do a lot of lunch appointments. I wanna get face to face with my clients. I wanna get them to know me. And that way they feel very comfortable. The more comfortable, your job as a realtor is to make them feel comfortable with you. That's your sole job, to make them feel comfortable with you. Michelle says, do I have a script for door knocking or have you door knocked recently? I've never door knocked, but the same exact script. You knock on the door, hey, Mr. Johnson, or hey, homeowner, hey, this is Ricky Cruz, the Remax of Orange Beach, how you doing? Good, good. Yeah, I'm, I'm just enjoying the day. Isn't it gorgeous out here? Cool. Well, look, I don't want to take up too much of your time today, but I just listed the house right there and I didn't know if there's anything I could do for you. Cool. Do you have an agent in the area that you would work with? 
I got you. Well, look, I'm sure at some point you're going to want to move or something. I, it, would it be all right if I stayed in touch with you? I'd love to work with you when that day comes. Cool. What's your email address? Boom. Right? Expired. Hey, Mr. Johnson. Hey, this is Ricky Crew at the Remax Orange Beach. How you doing today? Yeah, good. Me too. I'm just enjoying the weather. Isn't it gorgeous? Cool, cool. Well, look, I don't want to take us too much of time today, but I saw your house expired off the market the other day, and I didn't know if there's anything I could do to help you. Yeah. Okay, cool. Is there an agent in the area that you would work with? Normally on expires, they're just going to go right into what's going on with the expire, why they think it didn't sell, da, 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 da. But listen, guys, it's the same thing every time. Same thing. Robin says, aren't most of your clients out of the area where I work and live close to them and do face-to-face -face meetings all the time and lunches? But these condo owners live far away most of the time, right? Yes. So I say, hey, when are you coming down next? Yeah, when, when are you coming down to the beach next? I'd love to catch lunch with you, right? And then they say, I'm coming down mid-May or I'm coming down in August. Then I make a note. I say, okay, cool. I'm going to call you back a week before that and make sure that we set a time and a day to have lunch. It's the same stuff. People, people try to, they don't criticize, but they question the fact that I'm in a second home market versus a primary market. It's the same thing. Same deal, relationships, right? So a lot of people ask me about open houses. I don't do them because it's not big in my area. But if I were in a market where open houses were big, I would be the open house king, period. Um, there was a, I went to Ocala and did a speech the other day. It's a big um, horse farm uh, area, you know, 1 million, 2 million, 3 million. But it, it, but it costs a couple thousand dollars to advertise. If you overprice it, you might lose a couple thousand dollars. I would adjust. Guys, this it's the mindset, right? Look, believe, work hard, adapt, and be patient. See, the adapt part, that's what I'm a master of. I'm good at adapting to stuff. I could go to any market. I could go to any of you guys' market and crush everybody there. That's how I'm, I just believe, right? I, I, I believe, I work hard, I adapt, and I'm patient believe like I believe like I believed I was number one in the area I believed I was the number one Remax agent long before I was the number one Remax agent and right now I believe I'm the highest demanded number one real estate speaker in the world I believe that even though I'm not there nowhere close I believe that already I know that it's going to happen I believe it so I know that I could go to any of your markets and crush whatever's going on there and sell more property than anyone. Number one, I'm going to outwork them. Number two, I'm going to adapt faster. Number three, I'm super patient, right? And I understand that closings happen every day. And if I'm talking to enough people, I'm going to run into people that want to buy or sell today and build my business for the future at the same time. That's where efficiency really kicks in. Let's see, Robin says, are they receptive to lunch with someone, even if they are interested in selling soon? Yes, they would love to get to know uh, a realtor down here in the area and start a relationship. Who cares if they want to buy or sell now? That doesn't matter. What matters is that you create a relationship for when they do decide, no matter when that is. That's your job, not to buy, not to create transactions, but to create relationships. Let's see, Dave, are you asking them? Are you calling them asking? Is there anything to do for you? But okay, let's see. Dave, Craig Moore, that's way too fine a line. If you're, okay, I don't know what you guys are talking about. Looks like y'all got another conversation going on. Uh, and I see a lot of you guys saying love it and love your approach and <clears throat> all this stuff. And I just want to say right now, I love you guys. Thank you so much. I can't read every single comment. There's hundreds of comments. So I'm just trying to go to the questions, but I'm very humbled. The fact that you guys are even watching right now, much less care what I have to say or feel like it's good information. That's just me, my personality. Let's see. Let's see. Okay. Dave says, I don't have 10 K to spend on violating the do not call list. Does Red X scrub their phone numbers? Yes, Dave. Red X scrubs do not call list and it tells you all the DNC it says DNC next to it. And so if you if you don't want to call them, don't call them. That is a personal call. Don't call them. OK, uh, let's see. 
Uh, a lot of people are asking me to come to their areas, Southern California, Starkville, Destin, Orlando, Texas, um, Hampton Roads. Look, guys, set me up. Tell, tell me who to talk to, or your board or the state or whatever. I'm making calls right now to set up some speaking engagements all over the country. But if you know somebody that can hook me up with a speaking engagement somewhere close to you, please hook me up because I'll be glad to come and present and meet you guys and have a lot of fun, do dinner the night before, the day of, whatever. I just like hanging out with you guys and just I like spreading the wealth of the knowledge that I've gained over my 16 years of of becoming a millionaire, losing everything I've got, climbing my way back up, adapting, learning, and, and applying all from all the experience. There's two ways to learn. Remember, books, uh, uh, seminars, webinars, YouTube, podcast, but then there's experience. And without both, you will not succeed. So remember that. Start getting as much experience as you can, as quick as you can. Let's see. Okay, Michael wants me to do a for sale by owner script example. Here's my for sale by owner script. Hey, ring, ring, ring. Hello. Hey, is this the owner of whatever? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, this is Ricky Carruth at Remax of Orange Beach. How you doing today? Good, good, good. Yeah, I see you got your house for sale by owner. I didn't know if you guys might be open to working with an agent. Cool. Look, man, when can I see the house? Boom. That's the for sale by owner script. And what are we going to do with for sale by owner? See, we have a weekly email going, right? Every single week. Every one of you guys needs to follow my action plan and get a weekly email in progress. And so what's going to happen is, is if you if you work, if you do say 50% for, uh, for sale by owners and 50% circle prospect, you're going to put all of them in the in the weekly email. And what happens with for sale by owners is, is for sale by owners, they're going to get tired of trying to sell it their self. They may call you to list. They're getting your weekly emails or Maybe they'd sell it theirself, but then they need an agent to help them buy something. So they call you for that, right? Or maybe they refer somebody to you, but concentrate on the relationship, not necessarily getting that listing. If selling the property, their self is best for them. That's what you should want for them. But if you can help them buy the next property or if they get tired of selling it on their own and they want to, they want to, uh, you know, choose a realtor. Hopefully you've been consistent enough with them following up weekly emails, phone calls, etc., that they choose you. Pat Barry Jackson says, do I include past clients in this weekly email? I include everybody I know in the world in this weekly email. Everybody related to my real estate business gets that weekly email. People that I met 16 years ago when I started real estate, get this weekly email. I didn't start the weekly email until 2007, but every email address I had once I developed the idea of doing the weekly email, got the weekly email and still get the weekly email. That's something that keeps everybody. Hey, what's up guys? Sorry about that. My, uh, I don't know what happened. My internet just went down and then, uh, it took it like 15 minutes to come back and now I can't get on back on the the live feed of the, the uh, webinar. But uh, anyway, I wanted to come back real quick just to uh, answer some questions that were there at the end that I didn't get to. Um, let's see. Elizabeth wants to know, um, she needs the part where I talk about where you get the phone numbers. The best quality phone numbers I've found is Red X. Um, go sign up for my program at zerotodiamond.com and there's a link where you can save $150. Uh, the, hunt, the, the startup fee is $150. They waive the startup fee. Um, you know, if you do it through my website as a member, you save that startup fee. Let's see. Mike says I'll, I'll post the video. Yes, I'm going to post that entire video on YouTube, and it, it's on Facebook. But it looks like it's running on the will come back. So it's going to take four hours for it to end, and then I'll cut it, and then I'll, I'll repost it. Uh, let's see. If you guys watching the nine people watching right now, if you have any questions I didn't get to on the webinar, again, I'm sorry, my internet just completely went out, and I'm really kind of glad it didn't go out till the very end. Uh, we were about a hundred, uh, about an hour and a half into it, so we were kind of coming to the end. But 
But man, I'm glad it got all the stuff it did get. You know what I mean? Because there was some good stuff. That that was a good webinar. I was, I, I was pretty fired up. Um, all the information was real. And uh, I think I got my point across. And I think I actually helped a lot of people today. I think I really affected a lot of people today. And I'm just super stoked about that. I'm scrolling through some of the questions here that was on the live feed while I go. Hey, what's up, Aaron? Robert Sago said, did I mention what CRM I use? I don't have a CRM. I just put everybody in constant contacts and I send their emails from there. And then I have everybody in my phone and then, you know, my email and stuff like that. I'm not very organized, guys. That's the thing. I'm not very organized. I feel like organization holds you back to a certain point. I'm just as organized as I need to be to be super effective, right? What's up, Aaron? Josh Bryan, any plans to come to Chicago? I hope so, man. Book me a gig. Like, hook me up with somebody that I can talk to that'll that'll send me out there, and I'd love to come. And I will be out there at some point. I just, you know. Ingrid, what's up? Karen, thank you for watching. Cool, guys. So I'm just scrolling through some of the questions. Uh, I'm, on, I'm coming live to you from my phone here because my internet um, just kind of just completely crash for a moment. Okay. Hey, Carpenter says, I want to hook you up here in Chattanooga. Yeah, absolutely. Please hook me up. Please hook me up. Hey, what's up, Carlin? So my internet just crashed all of a sudden, but it was at the very end. So thank God, right? But I'm going through some of the questions that I did get to answer during the live, even though I'm live now. It's like a double negative, huh? All right, cool. Let's see. Okay, Quan wants to know what's my follow-up script look like after talking and they don't remember who you are. Not sure exactly what you mean, but guys, you always just play it off. You always just if you find yourself in weird situations, you just play it off. Um, but my phone script would be like, okay, cool, yeah, who is this? You know what I mean? Be real with people. If you don't remember, play it off, but be real with them. What's up, R.D. Adair? Hey, Ricky, having a crazy productive day today, and I hope you are. I know you are too. Absolutely. Let's see. It looks like I got through all the questions. I'm sure there was more. What's up, Colin? I'm sure there was more questions coming before that my internet just completely crashed. But uh, but it looks like I've answered most of them for now. Let's see. What's up, Colin? Let's see. Ruth Kaiser. How do you keep up with your current sellers and buyers? I just make a list of them. I have a whiteboard, uh, you know, and then I make a list of them. Like I have a list. I don't have my list with me because I'm at the office, but I have a list of all my like really hot buyers and really hot sellers. I keep it in front of me and I just make sure I'm doing what I need to do with those people, right? Okay, Craig says, random question, how important is it to have a car? I don't use mine and it's kind of expensive, but agents keep telling me to keep it. We have Uber, so the dynamics have changed. Any thoughts? I think it's kind of per market, you know? I think, uh, I think hey, get rid of your car, you know? I think if you can make Uber work and it works, do it. I mean, try it. You know, if it becomes a problem, go. you can always go get a car if you need one. If you feel like that's really going to help you and you don't need it and you really feel like you don't need it, try it, right? See what you think. Now you know. Make a decision. Make it happen. Colin says, did a million this week. My boy Colin did a million this week. I don't know if he went under contract or closed, but it doesn't matter, dude. A million is a million, and that's all there is to it. Aaron says, personal question. Uh-oh. Always scary when people say that. Not really. When you were digging yourself out of that hole several years ago, how did you move forward without letting your prior screw-ups bring you down? Let me tell you how I did it, Aaron. Because no matter what I'm doing, I'm hard at at it. I'm hard working. Like, like I'm always like 90 to nothing. And so when I was coming out of the hole, it's no different than I'm doing right now trying to pull out of this hole to get to the next level of being the, the highest paid real estate speaker in the world. It's the same exact thing. It was the same thing when I was roofing houses when I was a teenager. It's the same thing when I was uh, selling properties in the good market. 
I'm always 90 to nothing. So nothing is different for me, my mindset and my daily routines and what I think about the world and how I'm trying to progress and go to the next level than it is at any other time in my life. It's all the same. People need to quit putting it in a box and saying that I'm down, I'm up, I'm this, I'm that. No, no, no. You are everything all Internet is kind of freezing up on here. We got, we got horrible internet down here in Alabama. But yeah, like it's all the same, everyone. Like how you feel when you're down and, uh, you know, trying to pull yourself out of something, that should be the same mentality as you have when you're on top, trying to get to that next level, that next level. There's no difference, man. I get a little passionate about that. RD says, how, how, do you, how do you deal with an, uh, another agent soliciting your current listed properties? Has that ever happened to you? Yeah, it's happened to me. I don't care. Let them do it. I don't really care. I'll tell, I'll tell my owner, hey, that's against the ethics. That's against the rules. They're not supposed to do that. It's against everything us realtors stand for. But, you know, if, uh, you know, whatever. Let them do it. Who cares? If it becomes a problem and you need to report them, report them. But it's not a big deal. Who cares? Ruth says, thanks for all you do. Thank you, Ruth. Aaron says, thanks, man. That means a lot. Thank you, bro. Cool. So if any of you guys have any more questions, I'm sorry my internet went down. That was crazy. Um, I'll probably post this. I'll probably add this video right here to the end. of. That's what I'll do. I'll add this video to the end of the live feed. That way I answered all the questions. And I'll put it all in a YouTube video, and I'll have this video and that video. That's great. Good idea, Ricky. Yeah, you're welcome. Brian says, how do you balance personal family time with work? Because there's no difference, man. Like, like, like I'm giving it everything I got. There's no work-life balance, man. It's all life. I love what I do. I love being with my family. I love being at work. I love every little bit of it. My family supports me with all my craziness, right? So it's all the same thing. There's no, I, don't, I don't separate it. I don't separate it. And when, I, when I'm with them, I give them all of me. When I'm at work, I give work all of me. It's all the same thing. Here again, we're, se we're trying to separate things when there should be no separation. You should be you. You shouldn't have your personality when you're a family. Your per you should be you all the time. Michael Sherman says, how did you get in the right mindset when starting out? Because I was born this way, bro. I was born... To, to want to dominate. I was born to want to be number one. I was born to want to work harder than anyone else. I was born to want to help people on a massive level. I was born that way. And when you're happy, happiness is motivation. Happiness gives you energy. Happiness gives you everything you need in life. And if you're happy, then, then you have the right mindset and you're trying to move forward because you're doing what you love, you're helping people, and you know you're a good person. Ingrid says, thanks, Ricky. You have to run. We'll catch, watch the replay. Cool, guys. So let me know if you have any further questions. I really enjoy doing the webinar for you guys. Uh, I'll post it once it gets done in like three and a half hours or whatever. I'll chop it up and I'll, uh, I'll break it down. I'll add this video to the end of it. And, uh, and, and that'll be that. Uh, let's see. I didn't get to say the ending, which is I wanted to tell you guys more about the free stuff. Everything's free. Uh, so let's see, where is it? I got at Zero to Diamond, I have a 90-day action plan. I have my, my, my phone scripts. I have Circle Prospecting Roadmap. Shows you all the different twists and turns of a conversation. 30-day jump start. You need to be listening to one of those 30. There's eight of them. You need to listen to one a week. Videos of me making calls, tutorials. Online course, you get the Red X discount. Um, I've got two books, Zero to Diamond and List to Last. And every single day I'm posting content on YouTube, Instagram, SoundCloud, and iTunes. Right? I'm everywhere for you guys to motivate you to take your business and your life to another level. Um, and I mean, that's just, I mean, I've just figured out how to provide that to you in every which way possible. 
So let me know if you guys have any last minute questions. If you miss a webinar, I'm sorry, you can't watch it right now. It's gonna take three and a half hours for it to stop and start over. So I really hate that the internet went down and all this happened the way it did. But at least we got through most of the webinar. Almost, actually, we were at the very end. Karen says, you're doing what most coaches and top agents would never do. Thank you, Ricky. You know what's so crazy is, is I offer this to every single agent in my MLS. Every single agent in my MLS was, was got an invitation to come to the webinar. They can sign up for my coaching for free. They can do every little thing that I do for free. Am I worried about competition? No, because there's more than enough for everyone, and that's just all there is to it. Nobody's going to do it anyway, and if they do, they're not going to do it. They're not going to outwork me. I'm sorry, but no one is going to outwork me. So why should I care what they're doing? Because the work is where the magic is. That's where you get you get paid based on how much you do. So whoever does the most wins. No one's going to do more than me. Ricky, you have more coming than you can imagine. Thanks, brother. Absolutely, Craig. Julie, the information is great. Very helpful. Thank you, Julie. Mike, thank you, Ricky. Thank you, Mike. Cool. Guys, I just I just love you guys, and I just want you to succeed. That's all there is to it. Just bottom line, end of story. I just want to see you guys succeed, and I'm willing to give you everything I got to see that happen. I hope you guys can see that and you feel it. I hope you really feel it because it's real. Renee says, Ricky, thank you for keeping it real. What sets you apart from other coaches is that you are still an active agent. You rock. And I'm always going to be an active agent. Period. That's why I'm, another reason why I could do this for free is because it's not my full-time job. Right? I have a full-time job selling real estate and making a million dollars a year. So... I have a job. I don't need another job. I'm doing this because I love to do it. Cool. I think I've made all my points clear. I do have more points, but you can't get them all into a couple hours. I hope to see all of you guys sometime soon in a city near you guys. So you guys all get vid uh, emails from me. You'll get uh, YouTubes. You, uh, you'll get notified when I'm going to be different places speaking. And uh, I mean, the bottom line is, is that you got to build your business over the phone, build your brain with everything 